So the title of the video is pretty bold, right? It's like, I want to not own the YouTube business space or the SMA or high ticket, you know, whatever the fuck you'd call this industry these days. But I want to lay out my strategy and exactly how I see YouTube. Um, I'm, I'm at a point in my channel where I don't really have the authority to explain how to grow a YouTube channel just yet because I don't know when, as of when you're watching this, um, I've got a couple of thousand subscribers, right? But I'm starting to build my own unique um, like theory on how to grow a channel. And I've compiled this from lots of successful YouTubers and I've applied other models and different perspectives that I've gained from other industries and other disciplines. And I think I've sort of, I figured out a good strategy for growing a YouTube channel. Now, I want you to know that this is not proven <laughs> because I'm using it. And as you're probably watching this video, I've only been doing YouTube for like 18 months and I've got a couple, couple thousand subscribers. But I want to record this video now, more for my sake than anyone, anyone else's sake, to reflect on this in a year or two and look back and think, well, what was I doing? And like, how's it going? I just want to sort of document something with you today. It's just, if you're interested, if you're you plan on building like a content strategy or a YouTube channel for your own company, um, this is how I'm doing it and how I basically see YouTube. There's a couple of very, very simple points here. I'm going to hop into Myro to explain what the points are and stuff, but you know, it's more of a fun video. There's no real like mindset thing or cold email thing for this video or sales thing. It's just more about how I am approaching YouTube and what I'm focusing on and what my goals with YouTube are and how I plan on achieving those goals. So yeah, kind of just pulling back the curtain on what I want this channel to do in the future and where I want it to go. Um, my name's Charlie. Um, I've built and scaled two companies, an agency to seven figures that I sold and a coaching business to multi seven figures. There's no course, I've got nothing to sell you. Um, let me hop into Myro and start explaining what I actually want to do with this YouTube channel. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the data, right? And these analytics because you know, what the hell, like I've got nothing to hide, right? So from YouTube revenue, I, I made about like less than 400 bucks. <laughs> you know, it's not, I'm not making money from YouTube technically, like this is nothing, right? Um, but I wanted to show you something cool, right? So as of me recording this video, which is Friday the 5th of August, um, you'll notice that this video is probably released in early September. I, I'm pre-recording content right now because my objective is consistency and part of that basically comes from being like five months ahead six months ahead like my plan with this channel is eventually to be like three months ahead at all times with content and i'll show you my content strategy in a while and you know i'll show you exactly like how i build it and what my content schedule looks like and stuff but for now the data right so what we can see with subscribers and views is Basically with my subscribers, I've gained 537 subscribers in the last 28 days. Um, now I've only got 2000 subscribers. So my channel has technically grown by 25% in the last 30 days. It took me, it, I, it took me to go, when did I start my first video? Let's have a look here. This is get, gets kind of interesting, right? So if I have a big scroll down to the bottom of my content, when did I make this video? <laughs> So on the 22nd of March, 2021. So where are we now? So March, April, May, June, July, August. So I'm about really give or take like 17, 18 months. So about a year and a half into the YouTube journey. And it took me from March until May, 2022 to get to a thousand subscribers. Now here's the cool thing, right? About, about YouTube is when you get to a thousand subscribers, if you've got enough view time and enough like enough subscribers, enough view time, then you can monetize your videos. And the purpose of monetization for me is never to make money, but it's actually just give YouTube's algorithm an incentive to actually show my videos to more people. So when you monetize, like YouTube's algorithm has a bias towards making money. It's how YouTube makes its money is to run ads, right? So the first goal that I had with YouTube was basically to just get myself to a thousand subscribers, like as fast as possible. Um, it took about a year, which, well, a bit, a bit longer than a year, like 14 months. So basically I've been doing YouTube for 14 months, for 14 months to get to a thousand subscribers. I've been, I've, no, I've been doing it for 17 months in total. And the first 14 months took me from zero to a thousand subscribers. And the last three months have taken me from 1000 to 2000. So what's starting to happen is I'm starting to hockey stick in terms of my subscriber count. And I'm recording this video and it'll be uploaded in September. So I'm hoping, I don't really have a goal for how many subscribers I want to attain over the course of the next month. I just think it's stupid to set any sort of like emotional precedent or emotional tie to an algorithm. Like just doing that, just it's, it's, a, it's a recipe for disaster, right? So I wanted to show you this because like, 
it's interesting. I'm going to start hockey sticking. Um, and like a lot of people wonder how like you go from like zero to like 100k subs, like you know. So cause some people seem to do it so quickly, but really it's not. Like if you pay attention, I expect like if I just keep my upload schedule and you know if I can keep doing what I've been doing for you know three, four, five years, then I should start to see you know six figure subscriber counts um, and six figure view counts every week, right? So that's cool. that's quite exciting and that's kind of cool, but it's it's really just about consistency. So let me sort of explain my strategy for YouTube um, and like how I actually see the thing. So when it comes to to YouTube, right, what you're looking for is something that happens like this, right? And this is a, this is like a hockey stick graph where you know you you don't have many subscribers, like you know zero. You've got one thousand subs. You've got two thousand subs. You've got three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. You get to ten, then suddenly you go to fifteen, and then suddenly you go to twenty. And then it's 50 and then it's like 100 and then it's like 200 and then it's like 1 million you know like youtube's algorithm supports exponential growth if 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 you do it the right way so the main thing that i've learned about youtube the the number one rule right is consistency and this is consistency not of uploading because well it is consistency of uploading right because if you haven't got consistency in your uploads then like you're, gonna, you're not going to grow, but consistency in terms of message, right? Personality, shit, and quality. So, what I've learned is, like, I'm I'm looking at YouTube right now, right? And there's only so far I can grow my channel when it comes to like SMMA, right? Coaching sales and other stuff like that because like right now i make videos for marketing agency owners and coaches and consultants the videos i make are based on appointment booking and sales right and some mindset stuff right and like this this ring here this audience it's only so large so i don't know when i'm going to do this but there will come a point where i move away from making smma and coaching related content once youtube is sort of fulfilled its goal of for me of, of filling up like certain products and I will then transition to more generic content. But I'll keep my typical style because I want to maintain consistency in my personality and quality. Now, let me explain the overarching strategy here, right? Because I've realized that YouTube is really just about two things. Now, Mr. B says the two things are click-through rate, right? Times by watch time, right? Um, but how do you create these two things, right? Well, I've, I've realized it comes down to two things. Basically, it's V times V equals r right or er so what does this mean what does this equation mean well this first v you know v1 and v2 right v1 v2 equals er what does that mean well v1 is value right and value is like value is when you it's when you give someone information that helps them solve problems and understand their own situation better than they currently understand it. Value, through my content, the way I see value is by giving people perspectives and different perspectives and paradigms to perceive their issues and to provide them with knowledge and frameworks to help them overcome their challenges and solve problems and basically help them accomplish their goal in a way that's a little easier, less painful or more straightforward, right? That's how I define value. So when I'm making videos... I'm always making videos that basically can help people in some way or another, right? Now, the, you know, with this video, for example, it's about my strategy for YouTube. Like, it might not be helpful to a lot of people, but some people might find it interesting. But really, I'm always trying to help, right? Now, one of the issues with a lot of people's YouTube videos is their vehicles for ego and their vehicles for narcissism, Right? You can tell when someone's not an authentic YouTuber or an original YouTuber. They just seem to make content that's tailored towards an algorithm and like they don't really put any thought or love into the ideas of the videos. They just like the idea is based on the algorithm, not how they actually think they can best help someone. Um, I believe in helping people and I believe that if I want to grow my channel exponentially, it serves me better to make my content geared more towards helping people than selling things. So you'll notice that with my videos, like I'll explain at the start who we work with and who we help, and I'll explain at the end who we work with and who we help and how we can help. But 
I've 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 only ever got one link or two links, right? To, to call to actions, and they're never in your face. And like my videos are never designed to sell anything, right? They're designed like to eventually nurture people over time to schedule a meeting if they think they could be a fit for something that can help them. But my videos are never never ever am I trying to explicitly promote things. I'm just sort of subtly explaining like what we do, and that's because I want I don't want my videos to be about that. I want them to genuinely be methods and vehicles for people to help and like i'm going to have subscribers and people that watch my videos for years and don't buy anything from me and that's fine you know because i'm not making this channel to make money or promote my ego or you know appeal to some sort of narcissistic childish desire that i've inflated over the over the years the reason i make these videos is to help people and i think that's the number one rule to creating value is actually to have like good intentions Right. If you have good intentions with your YouTube channel and if you make videos to actually help and provide value to people that you resonate with and want to actually help, then this work. An example of this, if you look at Hamza, right, or if you look at Jordan Peterson, these are examples of people who, from what I can tell, genuinely have very minimal agendas in terms of trying to sell things or, you know, boost their egos and promote. And they actually want to spread messages and ideas and perspectives that genuinely help their audiences. And I've noticed that, like, you know, you see this a lot with um, Alex Becker, right? You see it a lot with Alex Hormozy, right? You also see it a lot with Sam Ovens, right? And there's a lot of other YouTubers as well. But you know you know who I'm talking about. There are, there are YouTubers out there that it's very clear they make content for their own gain, not your gain. And for me, one of my core fundamental strategies is understanding with YouTube that when you gain, I gain. I will be rewarded based on how much value I actually provide. And value isn't giving someone a list of the top three businesses to start in 2022, or you know, do these seven habits every day to be more successful. That's, that's not really value, that's trite surface level information that is, is tailored towards like trying to grow something as opposed to trying to actually help people. I don't know if that makes sense or not to you, but to me, like when I see videos that are very sort of like generic and trite, it's really obvious that the person who's making the videos is making the videos for their own gain, for the algorithm. So the algorithm shows the video to more people so they can basically have more exposure as opposed to actually building content that might be more niche that so actually genuinely solves people's problems. Because I don't know if you, you might have watched the video before, like the top seven habits to develop in 2023. And they're not really valuable videos, like it's all common sense shit and there are going to be exceptions to this rule, but part of my strategy here for taking this channel to however many subscribers YouTube's algorithm wants to reward me with is help, right? And genuinely producing content and videos that aren't, they don't look like they've been created in a artificial way. They haven't been mapped out or planned or put on a spreadsheet or researched or scripted. They're just ideas from someone who's solving problems that you're trying to solve and is slightly further ahead from you that you can understand and then add to your tool belt. I don't plan videos. I don't script them. I don't, like I have a list of ideas from thoughts that I've had and from questions that I've accumulated, but everything is organic and authentic. And that's one of the most fundamental strategies to me actually building value here is authenticity and originality. And I don't want to create, I've created videos before that tailor towards an algorithm, but I haven't really enjoyed making them. Now, I might be wrong here. I might come back and look at this in like a year and be like, actually, I've changed my strategy to, you know, tailor more towards the algorithm because that's how it works. But, you know, for now, like, if you look at my content, I'm kind of just making it to add value and help people. And I'm not trying to plan out content that provides the most gain to me. I'm trying to provide content that provides the most gain to you. And I know that through doing that, then I will receive the most gain. So it's kind of still selfish, but in a, in a different way, it's inverted. So V1 is value, right? V2, what's the second thing here? Because I can tell you what this is. ER equals exponential results. And this is in terms of like subscribers and, you know, views. But the truth is, is that I don't really care too much about these numbers. The main thing I care about is appointments, right? And actually like growing my business so I can fulfill my mission of making client acquisition easy. So this YouTube channel is a vehicle for a mission. And that's another key part of my strategy with YouTube here is I don't have this YouTube video to grow a YouTube channel. I have this YouTube channel, sorry, I don't have this YouTube channel to like grow a channel. I have it to accomplish a mission. And my mission is basically to make client acquisition easy, right? 
for all types of businesses, um, specific to like B2B high ticket stuff. And so whenever I make content to produce value, it has to sort of align with this here. If my content doesn't align with the mission, then I'm not really staying on track. So if you're wondering like, how do you actually stay true to value and how do you actually create authentic original content? It's to filter everything you make through a mission statement that actually resonates with you that you actually want to do. So the reason I'm so motivated to be consistent and make videos is because I've struggled with hard client acquisition. I've had periods in my businesses where I've made no money and I, well, it's, it's a start basically, or I've had periods even not, not in the last two years or so, but when I was growing my first company, periods where appointments don't flow, sales don't flow, I can't get the offer right and I'm, my mindset's fucked. And so like the mission for this is to make client acquisition easy. And this YouTube channel is a great way for me to get that mission pushed over the line because I'm doing it for clients. But when we do it for clients, obviously stuff waters down and filters down that I can actually upload to the YouTube channel. And the mission is really just to make acquisition easy. So the results that I'm getting, like how exponential, the subs are great and the views are great and the nice comments, everything obviously feels nice, but that's an arbitrary emotional projection of um, perceived fame that has no real indicative value of that I actually hold near and dear to my heart, right? What I really value and hold near to my heart is generating appointments for my company so I can close people and actually achieve our mission, the company's mission of making client acquisition easy. Um, and I believe that the way I'm gonna get my company Imperium acquisition to um, 10 million a year, right? To that sort of eight figure mark, which we're probably closer than we think, um, is, is basically to, if, if we achieve this mission and we make client acquisition easy, then we will get to 10 million a year, right? So the YouTube fan channel feeds into that and um, it creates stuff. But what's the what's the V in the middle here, right? Well, it's value is V1, value times volume, right? So volume is, a, is, is another huge component of my strategy. So I have committed basically to doing um, three videos every week for the rest of my life, right? And I'm not even joking that. Now, I might change my strategy here as I go, but... It, for, for now, for as long as I can and have the energy to do without working on things that, like, everything I do is basically filtered through this mission. Everything, I, every action I take is filtered through this mission. So what that looks like is right now, one of the best ways for me to accomplish this mission is to make three videos for my YouTube channel every single week. Like, it's one of the most asymmetric and impactful, impactful activities to this mission actually manifesting and becoming a reality. And so... Like right now, I am focused on volume. Now, the reason I'm doing three a week and not like five a week is because I've still got a company to run and videos are pretty exhausting to make and they require a lot of time and energy and effort and cognition, cognition, right? And so I've had to strike a balance between becoming a YouTuber and still having a business because I, can, I can't achieve this mission through a YouTube channel alone. I have to do it through a company, right? Because the company is the thing that you know generates the cash and the value that I can reinvest into achieving the mission, right? Um, and also it's long, longer lasting. If YouTube went out of business, the company would still be around, right? So, you know, the, the three videos per week contribute to this mission very nicely. And, you know, the, the real goal for me, like if someone asks me like, Charlie, what's your goal on YouTube? Like I get this question all the time, like what, what's your subscriber goal? Or, you know, what, what's your like plan? Like what, how, how many subs do you want? Or like how many appointments do you want to generate from YouTube? Or how many views do you want? Or like what, when do you want to, you know, whatever, right? My, I have no goal with YouTube. The only goal is consistency, right? The only goal I have is to be ruthlessly consistent with my content production. Now, to have ruthless consistency, you have to have simplicity, right? And you also have to have fun. So what I've learned on YouTube is that if I try and make videos that aren't fun, then I don't make them. And if I try and make videos um, or, or produce videos in a way that aren't isn't simple, I don't make them. I like videos that... I can basically just record and then upload. Now, at the moment, we're hiring an editor. So this video might be edited, right? But we have editors and we have people who make thumbnails for us. And like I produce cool titles and stuff because that's important. But like you'll notice the editing is very simple. There's no sort of like massive moving parts. It doesn't take long to ship the videos, basically. If, 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 if videos weren't simple to make and they weren't fun to make, then I wouldn't be able to make them consistently. If you ever want to do anything consistently, then you have to make sure it's simple to do and fun. And I've, I've made it simple by basically just giving myself a specific like target. Like I've got to make three a week, right? But not only that in terms of the actual target, but I'm also like the setup's very simple. I record in the same place. I'm not trying to think of like fancy shit to do. I kind of just let myself talk. And the way I make content and videos is 
Like I start with a thought, right? Like I literally just have a thought and the thought can come from, from anything. It can come from a question that a client gives me. It can come from a problem I'm solving. It can come from one of my team members. It could come from my business partner. My girlfriend could say something and I could be like, oh, okay, that applies. It could come from a book I'm reading or a podcast. Like if you want to make good content, right? It helps to start to become more aware of your thoughts and all of the sensory information that flows into your brain that could be relevant to the problems you're trying to solve with your channel to achieve the mission you have for the channel. So all of the information that, I, you know, it, it takes a while, like a year of doing this, but after a while, like you'll learn something like you might be reading a book, right? And then like, for example, I was reading a book called Systems Thinking by Donella Meadows. And that book told me something um, about the um, bounded rationality and the tragedy of the commons, right? It's two ideas and systems thinking. And I saw how that applied to some pretty cool stuff in the SMMA space. And so I've planned a video on it, right? So like it's, it's you've got to sort of start, like you don't go looking for content. Content kind of looks for you and you just have to be aware that it's looking for you, if that makes sense. But back to this thing. So that's really the, the thing that produces exponential results is value over volume equals, or value times volume equals exponential results. And like the, the other thing here that I would actually put at the beginning is T, right? And T is time right? The longer you produce content for, the longer you add value and the longer you continue to maintain volume of value, then the better your results will be. So time's like a little exponent in here. You almost want like a little T to the power of two or something because, well, actually you could even just put in here to the, like V, V, V to the power of T times V to the power of T equals ER, right? So time's really important, man. Like, YouTube for the first like year is supposed to suck. I'm I'm really having fun with it now because there's instant gratification to to my efforts, right? And like it's never about the subs or anything, but obviously it feels good to have them and I need to get over that because otherwise I become trapped to this 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 stupid data, right? But my point is that like if you want to have a successful YouTube channel, you need to commit to doing it for like 5 years, like every week for 5 years. So like my plan here is let's think about this. So if we have um, 52 weeks in a year, right? And we have five years, right? Or let's just say like, you know, I make three videos a week. It's 156 pieces of content basically every year. Um, and like, think about it for a second. Like if you do that, like every, every week for like 10 years and you produce 1,560 like videos that contain genuine value that can genuinely help people, how is it, how could it be any other way that you actually get what you want and get millions of subscribers? The other thing that I'll leave you with in closing is it depends, like it comes back, really comes back down to this thing here, this help thing. Because like a lot of people, like if you make videos for your ego or if you make videos for your narcissism and you, you just flex, you know, and all, you know, all you're doing is just like trying to show off and you know, like you see people who subtly do it. It's like, oh yeah, I bought my mum this new purse or I just, yeah, I, I, I took my mum out to this thing or, oh yeah, by the way, guys, I just bought this brand new $50,000 watch. Like, you know when someone's flexing, right? And you know when, like if, if the video is tainted by the flex, it starts to become extremely apparent why the video is being made. It's kind of like, even if 5% of your motivation to make YouTube videos is to flex and, and, and project your insecurities onto your audience, it works because it will generate you clout and attention and people will give you this this sense of authority. But I can't I can't for a, for a second think that like long term that you beat people by flexing. I think that long term, like 10 to 15 years, 20 years even, like if you have someone who's just making valuable content, and genuinely makes videos to help people and actually add value to their audience. And someone who makes content that kind of tailors towards the algorithm and isn't very original, but also they subtly flex things like, and a part of it is just about their lifestyle and their ego. If you put those two people together for a year or three years or five years, the person who flexes will almost always win. But if you put those two people together for 10 years or 20 years, the person who adds the value will win because value will always beat perceived fame or perceived like success true value and true meaningful helpful solutions that add perspective and help people 
People will always gravitate to that in the long term. Look at Jordan Peterson. Look at Patrick Bet David. Look at Alex Hormozzi. Look at Sam Evans, right? Some of the most successful people who have mastered the online space. And all they did was just make valuable content without flexing on people for years, right? Um, so that's just my take. I'm a tiny YouTuber, right? In the scheme of things, um, my sub count's minimal, but I spend a lot of time thinking about YouTube and, you know, building out little frameworks and ideas in my mind. But I've really just tried to boil it down to this equation, um, which just in summary for you is V to the power of T times V to the power of T equals ER. So if you want exponential results, you have to have v value over time and volume over time. And if you have enough value and enough volume for a long enough period of time, then you will experience exponential results. It's kind of like it can't be any other way. Um, unless, of course, like, you know, you can, you can, you can, like, this is the thing, though, like, if you, there's no real exception to this, because if you look at any YouTuber who makes valuable videos and at high volume over a long period of time, they almost always get this. But you might be like, oh, yeah, but I know this guy who's been making YouTube videos and he's been doing like three videos a week for like three years and he's still only got like 500 subscribers. And then it's like, okay, well, you've got the volume thing. But if you look at the videos, are they actually valuable? Or you might be like, well, I've been posting like a video a month for like five years and like nothing ever happens. And it's like, well, of course nothing happens. Like you're not, you haven't got the volume, right? And then there's people who do it like, yeah, well, I've been making valuable and val valuable content for, for with, with like three videos a week. And I've been doing that for like, you know, like three months. It's like, well, you haven't got the component of time. <laughs> So I've, I've tried to first principle this and I've tried to look at this from, from, from a first principles perspective and I can see that if you want results on YouTube, it's just value by volume over time. And this only really is gonna apply to business channels because that's all I know anything about. But from what I can see, it's kind of the main thing, right? So like Mr. Beast, for example, uploads like one video every month, right? But the thing about Mr. Beast is his videos provide so much value and so much entertainment, like the he doesn't have to have as much volume because he balances it out. I haven't figured that out one yet. I haven't figured that one out. But for now, this is my strategy. I might be wrong. This could be completely like awful and the wrong thing to do entirely. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, fuck it. Like if it, if it adds any value and helps you guys understand my plan for this thing, then that's cool. Um, so if you want to join me on my mission of making client acquisition easy, which I accidentally subconsciously drew hearts for, um, then go ahead and just subscribe and make any suggestions for other videos that you want to see around client acquisition in the comments and also like the video as well. Um, anyways, have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care.